My name is Dr. Thacker. Uh, I work at Willowbrook. Um, I will be providing um, care to women um, at Willowbrook's Women's Mental Health Clinic. A new baby can change the relationships in the family significantly. There's no doubt that having a child, especially if it's your first child, that can put on significant strain in a relationship, whether it is between husband and wife or significant others, or if it is between parents or other children in the family. Um, many times also, if it is your first child, uh, the dynamic between family members can be that they can give you some unsolicited advice and opinions on how to raise the baby. Um, if you are experiencing um, significant stressor between you and your partner in a marriage, um, because of having a newborn, what usually helps is having open and honest communication between you and the significant other, uh, making sure you are taking a few minutes in a day to listen to what and, and try to communicate with, with your partner and see what their needs are. Um, try to have an open and honest way of communication. Do not try to blame the, the other partner in any situations and try to listen to them with the intention of, of hearing where they're coming from. There is no doubt that having a new baby can be very stressful, especially in that first month or two uh, when the sleep cycle has not adjusted, when you are still kind of having issues with other things and, and figuring out you know, how to parent, especially if it's your first child. What really helps in, in those first few months is having good coping skills, um, doing something for yourself, you know, doing self-care for the first, if it is for 15 or 30 minutes a day. Um, self-care can look like different things to different people. Self-care can, can look like, you know, even if it is taking a shower and putting on a new fresh pair of clothing, or if it is going outside to take a walk, um, getting some sun, if it is talking to your friends or family members on the telephone, or even if it is taking some time and meeting with them, you know, for, for a few minutes in the day. Um, whatever it is that helps you bring happiness and, and, and joy, that is what you should be doing in those first few months of having the newborn. Um, it is also very stressful um, to, to figure out the, um, the nutritional needs of, of a newborn. Um, there's no doubt that some moms put on extra pressure on themselves to breastfeed the child. Um, what is best for the baby is that the baby is, is, has, has the nutritional needs are met and the baby is healthy. Um, do not put additional stress on you to, to breastfeed. Um, that is very helpful to keep that in mind. Um, do not shy away from relying on people who are part of your social support system whether it is your neighbor, your friend, your partner, um, your family members, if they offer you to help to look after the baby or if it is cooking or taking care of meals, take them up on that offer. Um, other things to keep in mind as a way to cope with the stress of having a newborn is to make sure you're getting at least a few hours of sleep in, at night or in the daytime. Um, if you have a partner who you can split the night shift with and get at least three to four hours of stretches of sleep, that is very essential for mental health. Um, if you can, you know, take the first shift, the first four hours of sleeping, and your partner can take the second half of the night. So that way you can get some good stretches of sleep and, and that can really help you with, with coping better with, with having a newborn. So some of the signs of postpartum depression um, can be symptoms such as crying spells, um, feeling guilty or, or blaming yourself essentially, you know, um, feeling worthless, um, feeling hopeless, feeling sad um, and, and depression, um, losing interest in, in things, not finding joy in, in really anything uh, much, increased or decreased appetite, um, difficulty with sleeping, um, feeling lethargic or just really tired, um, losing motivation and, and you know things, uh, the daily activities. Um, sometimes you know you can also start having thoughts of wanting to hurt yourself or the baby. Um, these are all symptoms of postpartum depression. Um, it is also essential to to differentiate between postpartum depression and what we call baby blues. 
Um, so one main difference between baby blues and postpartum depression is essentially um, baby blues start 24 to 40 years out, 48 hours after giving birth and may last two to four weeks after um, the birth of the baby. Uh, and most of the time baby blues do get better as, as time goes on. Um, and, and that is what differentiates between ba uh, baby blues and postpartum depression is that postpartum depression essentially can start three to four weeks after the birth of the baby and the symptoms are, are severe and they usually do get worse over time. And um, in terms of what causes postpartum depression, um, one of the, the, the things that we do know is uh, the hormonal disruption that can happen. So uh, immediately after the birth of the baby, some hormones, um, estrogen and progesterone, um, usually has a dramatic decline um, that can have a huge impact on, on bringing on the, the symptoms of postpartum depression. Um, some other factors we do know are associated with, uh, with having postpartum depression could be uh, things such as personal history of depression, um, previous history of having postpartum depression in, in your previous pregnancies, um, history of miscarriage or, or stillbirth, um, financial difficulties, um, relationship issues, you know, um, that, that you had even before having a child, um, having multiple births, so twins or triplets, um, having complicated pregnancy or having complications after giving birth. These are all factors that we do know can bring on postpartum depression. Um, sleep deprivation as well as, you know, issues with breastfeeding have also been um, linked to having postpartum depression as well. So the, the right time to find mental health help is when your symptoms are, are really getting worse. Um, if your symptoms are lasting longer than three or four weeks, um, or if your symptoms are getting worse to the point that you're having a very difficult time functioning on a day-to-day -day basis, um, if you are having a difficult time bonding with, with the baby, uh, that is the time to seek help. Um, do not shy away from reaching out for help. It, help does exist. Um, it is essential that people learn and educate themselves about the symptoms and signs of postpartum depression. Also, it is important to talk to your OBGYN provider, um, especially at your first postpartum visit, if you do feel like you're experiencing any symptoms of, of postpartum depression um, or anxiety or any other symptoms. Um, it is also extremely important to realize um, if you are having any other concerning symptoms such as hallucinations or um, extreme mood swings, having any thoughts of wanting to hurt yourself or, or thoughts of wanting to hurt the baby. Um, these are all symptoms uh, that can be psychiatric emergency and, and so they need to be looked at uh, immediately and needs immediate psychiatric intervention. You can get help by, um, first of all, you can go to your OBGYN and at your first uh, postpartum visit if you are experiencing difficulty and if you're experiencing psychiatric symptoms. Um, you can also talk to your child's pediatrician to, to reach out for help. Um, specifically, if you are having really difficult time with depression or anxiety or, or suicidal thoughts, then please call 770-812-3266 to be connected to Willowbrook Women's Mental Health Clinic um, to be seen um, as soon as possible um, so we can start treating your symptoms. There's also a national uh, mental health hotline number that you can call or text and the phone number is 1-833-9-HELP-4-MOMS. And so you can text or call that number. Um, it's a national hotline. You can also call um, the Willowbrook phone number 24 seven to get connected with uh, mental health services. Ideally, what you, if you already have a history of having psychiatric issues before you are considering pregnancy, you should talk to uh, a reproductive psychiatrist um, to, what, to discuss what we call preconception counseling. If you are on medications for, let's say, anxiety or depression or bipolar disorder or ADHD, uh, it is important to look at the medications that you are currently taking. And if you're planning on getting pregnant, um, you need, 
there it needs to be a discussion about what medications you can continue taking during pregnancy, what are the risk versus benefit of taking those medication, what are the risk of taking you off of the medicine uh, versus what are the alternatives to that medication. And um, if there is any nutritional uh, medic or any medications we can add on um, to help you prevent any side effects because of the medications you are taking currently. It is very important that you are proactive about thinking about that versus getting pregnant first and then looking at medications that may be harmful or that you may have to stop. So it is essential to have those conversations before pregnant, getting pregnant.